right, it's time, once again, we get to do this a couple times a month, to kind of get a blanket and curl up around the campfire. What was that the old joke about campfires? I can't remember it. I'll try and pull it together here. Gordon Duff is back tonight. And Gordy, of course, is the driving force. Interesting expression. For Veterans Today, VT, as it is lovingly known, and he always has much to say about many things. We'll find out tonight what he has to say about Syria because he's been writing about that. Very provocative. I'm curious to see what he's going to say about how the Obama regime has handled this entire... It's a debacle so far, as far as I can tell. I mean, the Russians send a delegation over here to talk to Congress. They get rudely slapped in the face, basically, and told... Go home. Uh, you've seen the uh, the juxtapositions. You've seen the reversals. You've seen the head fakes. You've seen it all. And I think the American people are are actually embarrassed, uh, among other things, by the performance of this administration. Don't breathe in the phone like that. All right, Gordon. Welcome back to the program, and let's have it. Well, I've, uh, I'm probably going to get not just breathe in the phone. I'm in my second week of a cold. Oh, so that I'm thing is not thing. gone? Oh, jeez. No, I mean, it, this was my my trip to Disney World. I went to, I went to get an autographed uh, photograph of, uh, with Mickey Mouse, um, was surrounded by children who probably had SARS or bird flu or whatever, and they passed it on to me. So I expect I'm going to be probably under the dirt another day or two. No, 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 you're going to make it back. Don't worry. SARS uh, or bird flu? I don't think so. Mirrors is the worst one. That's that's bad. But uh, you sound much better, seriously, than you did before. Well, well, Syria is. Uh, you may or may not be aware, but uh, VT and its crew uh, and the Damus Corporation, which uh, uh, is partnered with key financial entities in the Middle East. Uh, was directly involved in the negotiations over Syria. Uh, we, uh, to some extent, took an active position in policy. Now, the first thing I <laughs> have to bring out, there's, there's a there's a hundred ways to look at this, and a number of things that we, there are a lot of lessons. The key thing is that we learn all of the lessons that, uh, since we've paid for it here, uh, <laughs> with uh, with what's gone on. The, the first thing which would be bringing out your point is that Obama demonstrated that he's a clown. This little, we already knew that John McCain was working directly with al-Qaeda. Uh, that was a bad enough problem. We uh, pretty much knew that mm-hmm. Obama was always over his head foreign policy ways. Now, I would advocate, however, that people put this in a context. If this were the last president, we would have nuked Syria six months ago. Uh, no, that's a, that's the a truth. Based, You're right. Based on something picked out of out of a comic book. Exactly. So, and and have five thousand, ten thousand dead Americans. Instead, we look like like total douchebags. Now, is that better? That's the question here. But we do look like total fools. The the issues are funny on this to this extent. Well, we we track the sarin gas, uh, and this is uh, oh boy, Adamus has intelligence crews in Turkey and Hatay province. Uh, we have people in Georgia and Bulgaria. We found that the sarin gas had been uh, produced in Georgia, had been moved through. Uh, uh, through Turkey, okay, and this wasn't the first time it was done. All right, it was brought in by three former Ukrainian intelligence agents. I have their passport. Uh, it, that obviously, uh, the organization operating that identified itself to them as the Central Intelligence Agency, operating the safe houses in Hatay and operating the border crossing, and we're saying bribing the Turkish officials there, was Google Corporations, 
uh, Google Ideas so, Group. So you've got Google involved in this again. I've seen one story on that, and I, I think you mentioned part of it. Oh, yeah. Uh, I had this discussion yesterday with NBC. They've tripped over them there also. Hmm. And uh, what's been embarrassing for me to some extent is that I, I'm getting calls from NBC. I did a half hour with ABC. Um, See, are you sure you're calling the right person here? You know, uh, they don't mm-hmm. seem to care anymore. Uh, as long as, as long as they don't look like total idiots. Isn't now, that, that, you just summed it up pretty well. They, they really don't care as long as they look like they're doing their job somehow. Well, what, what they want to be is they want to be Jeff Rent. And they can't be Jeff Rent. They didn't put in the time. They didn't pay the bills. They haven't been there. They they really, they, well, they're, they're really not journalists, and they really aren't able to assimilate what's going on in the world and come up with any logical, honest, unfettered, shall we say, conclusions and analyses to present to the public so the public can think and do their own thing. Now, other than the usual rambling, because this is, this is late in the evening for me anyway. I've had a, uh, I've had a long, long... This has been... Syria has been a long and tiring ordeal for those of us who work within the region. But last night, NBC called me about uh, a former uh, member of the American Armed Forces, Eric Haroon, who had been arrested about a year ago. Uh, He had been fighting with what he had believed to be the Free Syrian Army and uh, is awaiting trial on charges of uh, discharging WMDs. And that means typically, you know, firing uh, rocket-propelled grenades while outside the United States. And they, they want to put him in prison for 35 years. That's what we were told. NBC, and I can't, I have an agreement not to let all of their story out, but NBC's uh, story, if they have the guts to follow this through, is that uh, Mr. Haroon was working for people who represented themselves to be the CIA, found that they were knowingly supplying weapons to al-Qaeda, went to the FBI to uh, become an informant, and was arrested and charged with a bizarre ancillary... uh, uh, very isolated charge, mm-hmm. you know, discharging a uh, an explosive device. Mm-hmm. One, a charge that was specifically designed to make sure that his testimony about the coalition between the CIA, Al Nusra, and Al Qaeda could never be brought out in a trial. Mm-hmm. And uh, NBC, you know, they're, they've decided. They're trying to go full. Of course, now this information, which a year ago was a big secret, 200 members of Congress have this now. Everybody's using the term false flag. It's the become the new, of, it's the new buzz term that people love to throw around. Yep. Yeah, they're try, trying to borrow thunder from us. They are. What has come out, it's been... Uh, rather strange, as this is, has moved along, it's become obvious that this has been a move against the Obama administration, uh, that uh, within the White House, Susan Rice and others who have proven themselves to be inept, ignorant, and incompetent beyond human imagination have managed to seize the attention of a president that, you know, I'd like to think that all these things that he says when he goes on TV and he pretends that, yes, this the, the World Trade Center magically uh, dissolved, uh, uh, yeah, yes, all of these things that, that we know are false flag attacks that, no, there's, there's a, a secret... Uh, uh, imaginary society that's that's running around trying to steal our freedoms uh, that he apparently believes this is this is what's frightening so many of us now because you know I'm as big an Obama supporter as you'll find 
All right. Well, let's keep that between us. What did you say? He is as stupid as he seems? You know, I had a moment here during this week when I uh, actually sat for a second and thought, what would Mitt Romney have done? Uh-oh. And then I shuddered, of course. Wow. And, yeah. and then and then after that, I began to, you know, I, I went on the path that you and I so often do, that why have we allowed ourselves to be browbeaten, we as a people, saying that you and I are among the people in this country, and frankly, you and I are not. We're, we're not part of the people. We are the intellectual elite in this country. God help us. It's true. But well, uh, they, had a, they had a guillotine for those people in France at one point. Hey, and uh, if we were, if Paul Pot got a hold of us, we'd be wearing a plastic baggie. We're in a position at VT where, and this wasn't the case two years ago, but we get regular briefings from intelligence agencies. They were the only news source that the intelligence, and I'm not saying that they tell us the truth, but they at least give us enough interesting lies that we we can glean information. But we are we're called on with some regularity, and we're we've received a fair amount of it. We've become to the people within the military and intelligence services, we've become mainstream. And uh, the ideas that we have, and, and during this last week, uh, Franklin Lamb and I got to the point where we were on the same, uh, the same basic wavelength as far as advocating that members of, uh, uh, former members of the American military travel to Syria and act as human shields. Now, Ken O'Keefe had actually done this in Iraq and has suffered tre- tremendously yeah. because of his would-be treason. Yeah. Well, let yeah. me tell you, if there were more people back then, in 2003, like Ken O'Keefe, 5,000 dead Americans would be alive. We would have trillions of dollars we don't have. We would have 300,000 disabled veterans would not be disabled veterans. This would be an entirely different case. O'Keefe was a hero, and uh, I've you know I've watched him attacked for this, and the idea of yes of <laughs> even me getting on a plane going to Damascus and standing in front of somewhere and daring him to shoot at me, I <laughs> I'm sorry I'm at a point where I'll actually do it, and and what am I trying to protect? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to protect the United States from self-destructing. I can't take this anymore. It's it's way too much. Now, you know, I'm always always a critic of, of the, the the Israeli lobby. Well, you know what I found rather rather strange hmm. is that the Israeli lobby has strongly backed uh, those people in Congress that have been a- opposing military action in Syria. At the same time, they've been strongly backing those people advocating military action in Syria. When you look at Rush Limbaugh, for years this man has been calling on, uh, on attacks, calling for attacks on Syria. And now, of course, he's the cheerleader because he got his talking points. This is chaos theory, game theory warfare, where every side is on every other side at the same time. It doesn't matter what happens in Syria. It only matters that the credibility of the United States is destroyed. That's happened. Now, the save on this is if we can all go dull in the eyes all around the world and we can take this magic John Kerry, well, well, what if they gave their, uh, their, their weapons up? There's this possibility uh-huh. that we could talk our way back to our level of ignorance and mediocrity. 